to become an advocate for domestic violence. You're not alone. There's somebody out there to help you. tonight, ready to start a new chapter. BTS almost makes it cool to speak out, and I think that that's what young people need. Um, sometimes when you don't have the physical scars, people don't listen as much, and I knew that I could take that stand and people would listen because of the shock factor. Dr. Phil reached out to me, so um, the moment is very telling when I walk onto the stage because the guy's face is shocked. And I was very fresh in my injuries at that time, about a year out. And I looked at him and I did say, you look shocked. And he's like, I am. Hi, my name is Audrey Mabry and I'm from Tampa Bay, Florida. I'm a survivor. Hi, my name is Melissa Dome and I'm from Clearwater, Florida. I'm a survivor. It was in September that I separated from Chris. We were going to get divorced, but we were still living together in the same home. When I was a junior in high school, I met my ex-boyfriend. And I stopped by his house in between school and work that day. So I went for a jog. I left my keys, I left my phone, like nothing. On January 24, 2012, uh, I began receiving numerous calls over and over and over again at like 1 o'clock in the morning. and. I woke up and it was it was my ex-boyfriend. When I came back, um, I re-entered the home and as soon as I entered the home, he was there completely naked, shaved from head to toe, butcher knife in his hands, and just like charged at me. So I answered and I wanted to know, like, what do you want? You know, you need to leave me alone. And he was saying that he just wanted to see me. And begins trying to now rape me with a butcher knife to my throat. So I'm saying, I love you, I love you, like I've been thinking about it, I want to get back together, just stop and I'll like pretend this never happened. He was already standing outside of his car and or truck and waiting for me. He starts questioning me with these ridiculous questions that made no sense whatsoever. So I start saying to him, give me time, let me think about it. I only have one chance to answer it right because he's telling me I'm giving you one chance to answer it or I'm going to gut you like an effing pig. So he wrapped his arms around me and held tight in the switchblade. He flipped it open and stabbed me in the back of the shoulder. And the second one was in the back of the neck. And the third one was above my ear. So I start praying, God, just let me live. Just let me live. That's all I want. Just let me live. And he tosses this gasoline at me. You know, blood filled my mouth and my throat and started, you know, warmth of the blood around coming down my face. And at that moment, I knew that this was a fight for my life and I had to scream. And so all I did was just scream and scream as loud as I could. And he just tosses this candle at me like it was nothing, just Before the candle even hits me, I'm up in flames. So I spin up immediately and I open the garage door up just enough to be able to get myself up and it falls behind me. And I run to the grass and my neighbor is walking by as I hit the ground and I'm rolling. She comes running to me screaming and she helps put me out. Since the attack it was actually um, 32 stab wounds total and I suffered a broken skull and a broken nose. Uh, two of my teeth were knocked out and um, a nerve in my face was severed, this um, part of my face. I have facial paralysis on the right side because the nerve, uh, the knife cut a nerve in my face. You know, I, I know that I was this close to, you know, being murdered. I flatlined four times and I had a stroke. They told me I might never walk again, I might never talk again, you know, it's lucky that I'm even alive. I see how much, you know, the impact on all of my family and friends because of what happened to me, so I can't imagine the impact on them if I was actually killed. So seeing, you know, another hole from the outside looking in, BTS, you know, giving these women a space that's all of their own, not only for them and their voice, but for their families and for women who are in silence. Lots of people always think they can change their abuser or be the one to step in and you know, they're going to change because of me, you know, it's not, none of that is true, it's always going to get worse. And BTS has impacted me in so many ways. Um, number one, 
Kristen, uh, the founder, she just inspires me in all aspects of the work. I'm just in so many ways. You know, a lot of people out there in the world are talkers and they say that they're going to do all these things and they want to make all these changes, but no one's actually, you know, doing it. No one's implementing it. And BTS is different because they're doing it. The second way is BTS really puts a spotlight on the women who have been murdered by their partners. And BTS gives a whole entire platform for these girls and these, you know, women who have been silenced and it really takes, you know, their voice and gives them a voice and gives them a place that's all their own. Break the Silence to me means freedom, it means hope, it means inspiration, it means love, it means compassion, it means peace, it means the future.